So, because I'm a new enough knitter that I remember what it's like to start, thought I'd share this one with you. Um, one of the things that confused the hell out of me when I started was how the hell am I supposed to handle all of these pieces and not drop anything? Like, what's how do you hold it? So, what, that's one thing my my grandma spent some time teaching me and practicing before I even got started. So. The yarn Leanna showed you, she, she does like a hold like this, which is fine. You can hold your yarn in any way, as long as it's free enough that you can pull easily on it, but it's not loose and, you know, limp everywhere. You need a little bit of tension so that you can control how much you're pulling through. So what I do is I just wrap it around my pinky and then like this. So it's around my pinky. I'm holding in the middle with the, the two fingers, just putting a little bit of tension on there. So it's more, more friction than tension. Like this. And this is the finger that, that, that I use to bring it forward, put it back, wrap it around. Like this is how I guide my yarn the whole time. And when I need to pull a little more to do the next stitch, just pull, and just pull a little more, just pull a little more. So as I'm working, it feeds through this hand. So that's that's the only thing is I like to loop it around my pinky, feed it through here, and there you go. And sometimes I'll do this just to move it where I want it. So that's that's one piece. In this hand, you will also be holding the needle that your your active needle, the one that you're stabbing with or you're knitting with. The other needle really is all its only job is to hold your stitches while you work. And it's just that right now this is the passive one that's holding all my stitches but as i knit with the active one the active will become passive because it will now be holding all of the stitches so we'll change hands so anyway right now this needle is the passive one and the way that i hold this one is like this i always try to work close to the point with a finger on on the yarn here because I want to block this from just boop, popping off. And also, when you're knitting or you're purling, you can use that finger to help you push the needle back and keep it there so that, you see that yarn that I just looped around? It's kind of blocked between the needles and my finger. It's got nowhere to go. If your finger isn't there, sometimes the yarn will pop back off of the, the needle you just wrapped it on and you're pulling nothing through and you just have to do it again. So I do this just to, to secure the area around here and to give a little bit of guidance. And the rest is really just holding, holding the weight of the needle. So nothing major here, but this is super helpful for me. Now I said, active needle is being held in the same hand as your yarn and how that looks is what I do is I'll, I'll set up my yarn like this and then I just it's just like this like no nothing fancy not you know it doesn't need to be to look like a pen or anything I just need to be able to move it so how that looks is like this. So I'm going to do, don't look at this one, It's a. this is a, a slip stitch. So there's nothing, there's no knitting here. I'm just slipping it from one needle to the other, tighten a little bit. This is going to be a purl. So I did that wrong. Let me just put the sucker back in. Okay. So I'm doing a purl row, right? So my yarn needs to be in the front, which it is. That's all good. See, I'm, I'm rewrapping it. And now I'm gonna purl. Each of these is where, is that's a stitch, right? So we're, every time you're either gonna knit or purl or skip a stitch or whatever, but one of these loops is what you're working in. 
And what you want to do is try to work as close as you can with your needles. Try not to split them up, separate them too much because it stretches your work and you get lost in yarn loops all over the place. So this is a pearl. See, I've got a finger on this one to stop it from slipping off. I've got a finger here. And I know that I'm going to pick it up in, from the west to the east. And now I'm going to put my thumb here so that it's holding both needles. And what that allows me to do is to go ahead and wrap. And then I pick up, pick my thumb off again. And now I'm holding this needle. And I'm going to push this needle backwards towards my finger so that my the, the wrap I just did is there. And slip it off. You see how I'm helping myself by keeping my fingers and my thumb in the working zone? And by not separating these too far, I'm not stretching my work. And also, I'm not losing track of which yarn goes where. I can clearly tell this is a pearl. And I have to pearl it. So I'm going to pearl again. So instead of stretching this all the way back to try to make the point fit under, I'm just going to Pull the needle back a little so that you don't have to stretch this so much. I go back in there, hold it with my thumb, wrap. And when I wrap, I actually pull it close to the close to where the other knit is. See how I don't leave I don't wrap it up here and then try to pull it through. I will actually Make sure it sits down against the yarn where I'm sending it. I'm going to push with my thumb slowly, pop it against my finger, and now there's that wrap I just did. And pull the needle off, or pull the, the stitch off. So I'll do a few more so you can see what, what it keeps looking like. So these are all pearls. So Pearl gonna hold it with my thumb gonna wrap around the needle push guide with my thumb back towards my finger push the, the knit off and you'll see as I'm as I'm pulling stitches off I'm kind of moving these back, back well forward towards the point so that they're all close together and that makes it a lot easier than trying to manage like needles like this and, and you know undoing your grip every time so again pearl wrap go in the back pearl wrap push to the back pearl wrap push to the back pearl and you see how sometimes, usually when I wrap, I'm holding the yarn between two fingers just to guide it to the back, moving in closer to my needle tips, wrap to the back, wrap to the back. So, and I know that the way you, you've you been taught, like the way you learned from Leanna, is that you're either accessing this way or this, this way. So you're thinking east or west, whereas for me, I'm using backward, like I, I'm coming in from the back or I'm coming in from the front. That's how, that's what it's easier for me. So I'm stabbing in from the back. And again, move the stitches. Like you're gonna do a lot of that, moving your stitches around. And I highly recommend do a couple of rows. You know, you can even undo what you've done so far on your project and redo it later or whatever, or use a different ball and cast on, I don't know, 20, 20 stitches and practice doing full rows of purl and then do full rows of knits 
before you rack your brain trying to follow a pattern because that's like it's like trying to do calligraphy before learning how to write right you, you need to practice your handwriting and then you can do beautiful invitations for weddings using calligraphy because you've practiced your writing first so that's how I learned is I did a I did a, a small project like a pot holder not a pot holder um, like a trivet and it was all knit row and knit a row of pearl a row and knit a, a row of pearl and as I was going to really put it in your brain and make it become muscle memory for the first little while I would say pearl done pearl done oh transfer the marker pearl because when you do that your brain records the action of pearl as being this and if you do this if you want to do a knit and you go knit your brain's going to go wait a minute that's not how this works so i did several rows of pearl every time i stabbed i'd say pearl and then when I did the knits, I did knit, knit, knit. Every time I went in there, I said knit, like verbally, so that my brain would register it. So that is the tip I wanted to give you about holding, how to hold your gear. So again, for me, this is what it looks like. I have wrapped around my, my pinky, going through these fingers, wrapped around my thumb. This is the, the, this is how I guide my yarn around. And then I just hold everything to work close to your points so that you're not stretching things out a lot. And just don't work too tight. You, you don't want to have trouble getting in there. If you're struggling to get your needle in there, it's because you did it too tight. So make sure that you give yourself a little bit of loose on your next on your next row as you're working and eventually you'll find the sweet spot. You'll know what the sweet spot is for you. And that's why each knitter that's called tension, each knitter has a different tension when they work just because we're all different people. So I hope that helped. Um, practice, practice, practice.